Hello everyone, my name is Qi Hong. I will present our paper on light label aggregation, a variation variation approach. At first, I'd like to introduce the background. Supervised learning requires many labor data sets. However, hiring domain experts to labor the raw data can be very expensive and time consuming. Luckily, we have cross sourcing platforms to hire non-professional workers to do the labeling task. It can be very cheap and high efficient. However, we still have many challenges. The non-professional workers can provide noisy labors, so we need to design some method to clean the noisy labors provided by the workers. And uh, there is also another challenge. We have more and more large data sets like ImageNet. If we only have one person, then he or her will cost the 19 years to label the full data set. So we argue that raw data should be continuously processed during the time. I'd like to introduce label aggregation. Actually, label aggregation is designed for inferring the unknown true labors according to the redundant noisy labors provided by the workers. As shown in the figure for the app logo, different worker will provide different answers and we don't know which answer is the right labor. So we need an algorithm to aggregate those labels provided by the workers and infer the final result for the instance. There are many existing labor aggregation approaches, but they are designed for online scenarios. They will use all the observed labors together and they will aggregate them and give the corresponding aggregated labors as shown in the figure, uh, the workers will label all the instances and provide the corresponding noise, noise labors. Then the aggregator will aggregate all the noisy labors together and output the result. But this application scenario can be unreasonable for today's requirement. First, Collecting large amounts of raw data requires a long time. It's unreasonable to wait many years to collect all the data instances. Secondly, uh, recent privacy and governmental policies will limit the data storage time, so we can't accumulate the raw data for a long time. So we argue that we need an online manner to incrementally aggregate subsets of contents. This is the online label aggregation scenario of this paper. Uh, we can provide all the data to the workers at once, and we can also continuously provide the subsets of data to the workers. The workers will gradually label the received data and uh, output the noisy labels trunk by trunk. When receiving a trunk, the online label aggregator will, will aggregate the trunk and output the corresponding aggregated labels. After the aggregating, the aggregated trunk will be discarded immediately. Before introducing our methodology, I'd like to introduce the motivation. We put sliding window over two famous offline methods to make them as online variants. According to the experimental results, we can see that sliding window doesn't work. There are, there are large performance gaps between online and offline algorithms. We also apply the 
LAA model to analyze scenarios by using mini batch updating and mini batch aggregating. In this case, we can see the gap between online and offline methods is small. However, according to the results shown in figure B, we can see that LAA has higher error rate. It doesn't have probabilistic model to describe the generative process of the observed labors, so its performance is not robust. Then according to the results, we have two conclusions. Mini batch stochastic optimization is good for online aggregating because it can make use of knowledge of the old batches. Probabilistic models for describing the generative process are very important because it can guide the unsupervised training of the aggregated of the aggregation model. Then let's see the general idea of this paper. We use stochastic optimization to train our model so as to make it online. We also use generative models to describe how the observed data are generated. The optimization goal of this algorithm is to maximize the data likelihood. To define the loss function, we need a single optimization object. Uh, and uh, which means we can't use algorithms like EM or min-max entropy, which have multiple optimization objectives, like the E step and the M steps. So in this paper, we apply Bayesian learning to define the generative model and the loss function. The definition of the loss function is shown in the figure. It's based on stochastic variation inference. The neural network Q can be regarded as the approximate distribution. The generative model is designed for describing the, the generation of the observed labels. Then we maximize the data likelihood according to the expression of the evidence lower bound, we can see that actually the log data likelihood equals the sum of the Kubek leaf divergence and the evidence lower bound. So to maximize the data likelihood, we can just minimize the Kubek leaf divergence. The only limitation of this learning from work is that to apply stochastic training, the parameter of the generated model P should be differentiable with respect to the loss function. Then I'd like to use an example to introduce how to define a label aggregator according to the aforementioned algorithm. Um, the model shown here is BLAS AM. And we use um, multi-layer perception to be the approximate distribution of, of BLAS AM. Then we need to define the generative model. Mm. The challenge is that we may have intractable postorial of the generative model. Uh, and the traditional variation inference like mean field variation inference where where make some mean field assumptions and uh, this kind of algorithm also require the closed form of the of the postorial. Uh, in order to avoid this challenge, we used another kind of variation inference uh, named stochastic variation inference, and we will rewrite the optimization goal by putting the expression of the postorial into the Kubek level divergence. Then according to the, the final loss function, we can see that we don't need the exact postorial form anymore. The generative model of BLAS AM is based on confirm metrics, which is a very well-known concept of label aggregation. 
each worker k will have a configuration matrix k. The element k t c is the problem is the probability that the worker k gives labor c when the true labor of the instance is t. Then according to the definition, we can easily calculate the data likelihood of the observed labors. And uh, then we can calculate the value of the aforementioned loss function and uh, train the model. Uh, it is important to note that the parameter of the generative model should be differentiable. So we use a softmax function to generate each line of the configure matrix. According to the aforementioned content, we can, we can define the aggregator and the trend model. The workflow of the proposed model is shown here. Uh, the aggregator will aggregate the received chunk one by one, and uh, the chunk will be used to update the model parameter after the updating, we can we can have the corresponding configure matrix, and then we can use the configure matrix to to infer the aggregate labels of the trunk. We also design a novel optimizer for our algorithm. It's a variant of MS probe and. Uh, and uh, we use a, a we use a clip operator to avoid gradient explosion, and we also use decayed learning rate to avoid abrupt stop. We analyze the convergence of this algorithm based on the well-known convex online learning setting, and uh, it used the rec rate to measure the convergence. Well, the theta star is the best fixed parameter. Then we have the, the following theorem, which shows that the regret of this algorithm is all square root of t. So we can have the following limit, which shows that the average of the difference between the online prediction and the, the best fix the parameter tend to zero during the iterations. So we can say that our algorithm can converge. Let's see the experiment. We use two real world data sets and two synthetic data sets to conduct the online labor aggregation experiments. And we can see that BLSAM outperforms all the baselines across the data sets. We also show the the full aggregation process on RTE, and we can see that uh, BILA CM continuously outperformed the baselines. And uh, according to the figure B, we can see that the online and offline variants of BILA CM has similar error rate. And uh, this is the experimental result of the optimizer. Uh, we can see that our optimizer can converge to a better result comparing to MS probe. Uh, it converges slower than Adam because Adam is a momentum method. However, our optimizer, uh, since our optimizer is based on the gradient, so it has low risk of divergence. We also conduct the sensitive evaluation on our method. We can see that our method outperforms the baselines in every cases. Uh, although the algorithm is designed for, for online scenarios, we also conduct the offline comparison. We can see that BLSAM can also outperform the offline methods on offline scenarios. That's it. Thank you for listening.